while we wait for the water to boil, let's open up and clean up the cartridge. Now, if you've ever tried to open one of these up before, you may notice that the screws that are in there, it's only three screws. Some older cartridges had five and actually used regular screws, but for the most part, 99% of your Nintendo cartridges are gonna be the three screw hex variety. See that in there? It's a little bit of an odd shape. So you can't just use your standard Phillips screwdriver for it. It's not going to work. What you need is see some 4.5 millimeter game bits. Maybe we'll block out the logo, but this brand which I got on eBay for about $1.99 seems to work just fine for me. So we'll take the bit. See it's got the right size hex there. So we'll slide that into the screwdriver. Alright, take the three screws out, and it's just going to pop right open. Keep in mind, got the two hooks on the top. Got the hook there, got the hook there. You've got to unflip these out of there. When you get it open, you'll find it's pretty simple. There's a lot of wasted space in there. There's the two pieces of the shell and the actual circuit board for the game itself. Why is it so small compared to the size of the case? Because they started out making Famicom cartridges, which were just about this size. You know, when they brought it over to America, they wanted to change the shape so that it didn't seem as much like a video game, and they wanted their own form of security so that they could lock out other companies. So they made the proprietary shell that no one else was allowed to manufacture or had the, uh, the specs for. So basically, the, the NES shell is a lot of wasted space, just so that it would fit in the slot and do what they wanted it to do. Now, since you've got this out of here, you can open up all your games and you can see the sort of corrosion on there. You need to take a look at that mess. See how it's all, it looks all scratched up? That's really just wear from being slid in and out of a slot. You know, there's some buildup of crud on there. Guess what that crud buildup is? That's probably someone's spit from blowing on the stupid cartridge and trying to get it to work flip it over. Same thing on the other side, it's just dirty. Now, you could sit there, open them all up, and get in there with a toothbrush and whatever else, and you'll get them pretty clean. You know, that's the best way to clean it if it's completely destroyed. All we're going to do, and what I do all the time, and it works beautifully, Q-tips and Windex. Not rubbing alcohol, definitely not water, Windex. Whatever reason, the ammonia perhaps dries it out, the, the alcohol, whatever it is, Windex works great for cleaning Nintendo cartridges. Alright, all we need is some of this regular old generic Windex, some regular old Q-tips, and, and a dirty cartridge. Take the Q-tip, take the Windex. You could also get a little dish if you have a lot going on. Just kind of get the Q-tip wet so you can see it turning blue there. And once it's nice and coated, take your dirty cartridge and just get it right in there. Let's see if I can do this so you can see it. Just run it against this edge. And you go ahead and rub it well. So watch for a second, and then I'll explain the other side. So just scrubbing it back and forth with that wet Q-tip. Not the most visually exciting, but uh, it's doing its job. All right, and then we're going to take the Q-tip and take the other side of the Q-tip, the other side of the same tip, and do the underside of the board. So you see, I have to do the bottom pins and the top pins. I'm going to take that Q-tip out and have a look. Pretty grubby. Alright, so flip it around, use the dry end of the Q-tip and scrub again across the top pins. And 
going to use the bottom part of that side of the Q-tip to do the other pins here. So basically you're using one Q-tip as four things. A top and bottom wet cleaner and a top and bottom dry cleaner. Now I take a look at what I just came out with the dry. That's still very dirty. So what we need is to do it again. You basically keep going with the Q-tip. Take another wet Q-tip, scrub the top, scrub the bottom, then use the dry end, scrub the top, scrub the bottom, I think you get the idea here, right? Now it comes out, that's pretty clean there. All right, so we've got this cartridge now. It doesn't really look much different to the eye, but when we go to put it in the machine, it should actually boot right up. Now, in addition to scrubbing the pins on the cartridge themselves clean, you're gonna have to scrub underneath where we took the cartridge port off. You've got all these pins. This is usually the dirtiest part of the whole thing. And you wouldn't think so because it's inside of the, you know, it's put together once and nobody messes with it. But, uh, these get pretty grubby, as you can kind of see in there. See the, see the dark discolorations there? That's, they're worn, they're dirty, they're corroded. You know, they could be sort of oxidized, whatever they are. Those need to be cleaned really well with a Q-tip and some Windex as well. And on this particular board, we have this corrosion over here where something leaked or maybe got wet in there or whatever. We're going to have to clean that off too. Although it doesn't seem to be interfering with the operation now, it's probably a good idea to get rid of it before it goes much longer. Let's go ahead and Q-tip clean off the cartridge connector on the board here. You can see as I go, you can see it shining up a little bit more. Get some of the crusties off of there. Let's take a look at that Q-tip. It doesn't look too bad. Keep going on there. Let's get that as clean as we can. See it's kind of wet there. We'll flip the Q-tip over and dry it off. Get off whatever oxidization might be on there. You make the cleanest connection you possibly can. It still looks scratched up from the fact that it got wedged into the original connector. But that's not too bad there. You can kind of see what's going on. It looks pretty good. I'm going to flip the board over. Do the same thing to the other side. Let's get that. Go ahead and get it nice and wet. There's no power running through here. You're not going to mess anything up. Don't want to soak the board, but it's okay to get these pins wet. It's got ammonia in there, it's going to dry it. Then we take the Q-tip, flip it over, dry it off. Take a look and see if that's dirty just a little bit. I think we're pretty good here. Look at the pins up close. You see a little bit of scratching on there. But mostly, they're, they're in pretty good shape. There's no you know, brownish yellow gunk going on, so we're doing all right. Now this board also has this section of whatever here. I'm not sure what that could be, but it's not good. Well, same idea, we're gonna gently clean that up with the Q-tip and the Windex as much as we can. Who, anything could have spilled, spilled in here at some point, we have no idea. It could also just be some of the, uh, when people would blow into the cartridge port itself, you, know, you could get some of that, someone's dried spit once again, just the same thing that you're cleaning off the dirty cartridges, could be the stuff that's going on here. Now it's got as clean as I can without getting too much Q-tip hooked on the uh, pins here. If I needed to go any further, I would definitely need a better tool than that. That did an alright job of getting it basically surface clean there. Not bad. We'll see if it works when we put it back together, but it, it looks like we should be alright there. Oh, there's another another little bit over here. This section over here, that's just a little bit of the same idea. Now this looks like there could actually be some damage going on here. 
Look at all that gunk. See how black that just got in half a second there? Blech. You know, whatever that is, we want to clean it out as much as possible. Now it looks like that's on the part that connects the board to the RF connector. So it's possible that uh, they were not getting the best signal to their TV with this particular NES. And if so, it probably had a lot to do with this filthy connection right here. It's still got some damage there, but at least it's not covered in a layer of ugh. To clean the exterior portions, the plastic cases, really just need some disinfecting wipes and some paper towel. Take, take the case, wipe it as best as you clean as you can on all sides with the disinfecting wipes and then dry it with the paper towel. It comes back to being nice and shiny pretty quickly. Gotta really get in the cracks in there. After you're done wiping it off, you might notice that down in the cracks are kind of nasty. It's hard to get that clean in there. Sort of around the edges here. What you can do is you can take the entire thing and put it in the sink or the dishwasher. It won't really hurt this. Although I wouldn't put it in the dishwasher if yours still has a good logo on the front. But you can get it wet. It's not going to be a problem. So you can get in there with a toothbrush. You can get in there with a Q-tip. You know, it's totally okay to just run the water on it. Use a sponge. rinsing that off. Lay it out on some paper towel to dry off. Got the door open so that it's not uh, staying wet inside there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Donna. Pull yourself together.